The train pulled into the Danville station late in the afternoon of April 3, 1865. Smiles and no doubt cheers greeted the weary travelers who had just endured a nearly 16-hour train trip from Richmond. Local dignitaries welcomed the highest officials of the Confederate government, including President Jefferson Davis. Among those dignitaries was Major William Sutherland, Danville's leading citizen. Lawrence McFall is a local historian and author of Danville in the Civil War. Major Sutherland appears with the carriage. He himself is driving the carriage now because, after all, he's inviting the president of a nation, the Confederacy, to stay in his home. And so the president boards the carriage along with Secretary and Mrs. Trenholm, and they proceed up Main Street at a slow gait, I'm sure. And they pull up on the circular walkway and open those double doors. It must have been a feeling of great relief for everyone involved when Jefferson Davis looks down this hallway and feels that, oh my goodness, I'm home and I'm still in Virginia. The Sutherland's gracious home was considered the most elegant in all of Danville and was a fitting place to host President Davis during his stay. Confederate officials must have been cheered to arrive safely in Danville, having just abandoned Richmond after the fall of Petersburg to Union forces. They quickly set to work in the new capital of the Confederacy. During the following week, the Confederates planned their strategies for continuing the fight. Lawrence McFall explains that among Jefferson Davis's first duties that week was to reassure the people of the Confederate states. In Major Sutherland's study, Jefferson Davis pens what became known as the Last Proclamation. And it was an appeal to the people to have heart, to not despair. The government is still within the boundaries of the state of Virginia. As he wrote the proclamation, Jefferson Davis could not know that the war would so soon be over. Instead, there was frenzied activity throughout Danville that early April week. At the president's order, men were strengthening the town's earthworks in anticipation of battle. Thousands of refugees from Richmond and other areas poured into the town. Officials worked steadily to carry on the business of the Confederacy. And of course, the president and his cabinet met. One evening after dinner, the gentlemen held one of the last official cabinet meetings in the Sutherland dining room. As they conferred, a young lieutenant arrived with news that General Lee had fought a battle just that day. President Davis asked the lieutenant what his feelings were about the future. The young lieutenant said, sir, with all uh, honesty, I think General Lee will be forced into surrender of his army. The president and cabinet members may not have believed the lieutenant. Perhaps they were uncertain. But they kept up appearances, as Mrs. William Sutherland recalled years later when interviewed by a reporter for the Richmond Dispatch newspaper. One day at the table I said to him, Mr. Davis, would Lee surrender in the war? And he replied, by no means, we'll fight it out to the Mississippi River and so said all his officers. I told them they were simply whistling to keep their courage up, but they said they meant what they said. The dreaded news arrived in Danville on April 10th. General Robert E. Lee had surrendered at Appomattox. With no army protecting the Confederate government in Danville from Union forces, officials hastily packed to flee south. President Davis returned to the Sutherland home from town where he had heard the news. He went to collect his things and bid Mrs. Sutherland farewell as she recounted to the Richmond Dispatch reporter years later. I met them at the door and Mr. Davis told me almost in a whisper that Lee had surrendered and that he must leave town as soon as possible. Making a few hurried arrangements, he offered his hand to me to say goodbye and I asked him the question, Mr. Davis, have you any funds other than Confederate money? And he replied in the negative. Then, said I, offering him a bag of gold containing a thousand dollars, take this from me. I offered the money without having consulted Mr. Sutherland, 
but I knew it would be all right with him. Mr. Davis took my hand, and the tears streamed down his face. No, said he, I cannot take your money. You and your husband are young and will need your money, while I am an old man, and I don't reckon I shall need anything very long. The Confederate president told the Sutherlands goodbye and left their home for the last time. He and his cabinet members boarded the train for Greensboro, North Carolina. In a matter of weeks, the war finally ended. Today, the site of the last desperate days of the Confederacy houses the Danville Museum of Fine Arts and History. Its centerpiece is the beautiful Sutherland home that witnessed many of the final acts of a dying government.